In fact, if you have the steady state distribution of the embedded Markov chain, you can derive the steady state distribution of the continuous time Markov chain and vice versa. Let's denote by V the steady state distribution of the embedded Markov chain. Re remember this embedded Markov chain is a discrete time Markov chain. Then of course, it satisfies the global balance equations. It satisfies V equals V times uh, capital V, which is its state transition probability matrix, one step transition. And of course, uh, the components of V should adapt to one. And for the continuous time Markov chain, we can write the global balance equations in this way. But you see, Q sub J i can be written as minus Q sub J j times V sub J i. And therefore, we have this relationship. And based on this, you can write the distribution of the embedded Markov chain uh, if you have the, the rate values uh, or if you have the distribution of uh, the embedded Markov chain from this, you can obtain um, the steady state distribution of the continuous time Markov chain. Again, I will emphasize this. Um, there is a close relationship between the embedded Markov chain and its underlying continuous time Markov chain in the sense that if one of them is ergodic, the other is also ergodic and they are guaranteed to have steady state distributions. Recall the conditions for being ergodic. We call a Markov chain ergodic if all states are uh, positive recurrent and the Markov chain is irreducible and aperiodic. So in this case, you are guaranteed to have a steady state distribution and the embedded Markov chain, which is a discrete time Markov chain and the continuous time Markov chain are related in this sense. If one has a steady state distribution, the other also must have, and not only that, but you can also derive the numerical distributions from one to the other.